All right, let's be real for a sec. How often do you find yourself glued to your phone, like anxiously refreshing your inbox? Or maybe you're stuck staring down the clock, just waiting, waiting, waiting. Okay, tell me about it. Waiting for that job offer to finally come through those test results that feel like they take forever. Or even just, you know, a text back. We've all been there, right? It's like yeah. waiting is just this unavoidable part of life. It really does feel that way sometimes. Totally. But what if I told you there's actually a hidden superpower hiding in plain sight within those moments of impatience? Okay, now that's interesting. Most of the time we just think of waiting as, you know, wasted time. Those in-between moments we just have to get through. So how does this Dr. Adu flip that idea on its head? Well, he wants us to stop thinking about waiting as this passive thing we just have to endure. Instead, he wants us to see it as an active choice, like a pause and expectation is how he puts it. A deliberate holding on, but with a purpose. Holding on with a purpose. I like that. But how do we actually put that into practice? Because sometimes, let's be real, waiting feels way more like a frustrating freefall than a purposeful pause. Oh, 100%. And that's where Dr. Adu's waiting equation comes into play. He says that every single waiting experience, no matter what it is, boils down to three key factors. How long is the wait going to be? How much can I actually handle before I totally lose it? And is the payoff at the end actually worth it? So it's kind of like when I'm stuck in line for that new burger place everyone's been raving about. The line is out the door. My stomach is growling. Mm -hmm. And I'm starting to wonder if any burger is worth this much hanger. Right. You're like, is this even worth it? Exactly. <laughs> so in that moment, I'm trying to solve Dr. Dew's waiting equation in real time, right? Exactly. You've got the long wait, the dwindling endurance, and the potential for a big payoff if the burger lives up to the hype. But here's the thing. Sometimes, even with a promising reward on the line, the waiting game just totally backfires. Ugh, tell me about it. How many times have you been totally let down after waiting forever for something? Way too many times, honestly. Remember that ramen place, the one with the hours long wait? Everyone and their mother said it was the best ramen in the city. Oh yeah, totally overhyped. The worst part is we stuck it out. You're like, it's gotta be amazing after all this waiting. And honestly, it was just fine. Such a letdown. It really is crazy how often waiting just doesn't work out in our favor. But you know what's so fascinating? Even in those situations, mm -hmm. even when the payoff is a total disappointment or the wait feels like it's never going to end, there's still an opportunity for growth hidden in there. Wait, really? Hold up. Are you saying there's a silver lining to those moments when you're about to pull your hair out from waiting? Now that's interesting. Tell me more. So we've been talking about all those times waiting just drives us crazy. You know when the payoff is a total bust? Or it feels like the wait will never actually end? It's the worst. But you're saying there's more to it than just feeling disappointed, right? Way more. This is where Dr. Adu's perspective is so interesting. He doesn't shy away from how challenging those weights can be, but he challenges us to see them as opportunities for growth, like they have hidden superpowers. Hold on, hidden superpowers in waiting. Okay, now you have to tell me more. What kind of superpowers are we talking about here? Well, think about it for a second. When we're stuck waiting, we're also being forced to confront our own impatience. <laughs> right? It's like this battle against wanting everything instantly. And we live in a world of instant gratification, so it's hard. It really is. But Dr. Adu says that in that space, that space between wanting and actually getting, we can build some really incredible qualities like patient self-reflection, even better decision making. Wait, hold up. Are you saying that waiting can actually make us more patient? Isn't that kind of like saying eating a whole cake will make you skinny? I know it sounds kind of strange, right? But there's actually research to back it up. The source we're looking at, it actually mentions a study by Diane Fishbach. And they found a direct connection between waiting and having more patience. Okay, color me intrigued, but how does that actually work? How do we go from anxiously watching the clock to becoming like Zen masters of patience? Dr. Adu gives us a framework, a way to transform all that waiting time into time for self-discovery. And it starts by asking yourself three simple but powerful questions. The next time you're stuck waiting for something, ask yourself, what's really going on in this situation? Then. How am I actually feeling about all this? And finally, where do I actually want to go from here? It's like we're hitting the pause button on autopilot, right? Instead of just letting our emotions go wild while we wait, those questions force us to actually think about what we're waiting for and how we're handling it. Yes, exactly. It's about taking charge of that waiting time instead of letting it control us. And those questions, they can help us see things more clearly, make better choices. Instead of just 
like reacting out of frustration. So instead of just being stuck on the struggle bus of waiting, we can actually grab the wheel and decide where we want to go. Precisely. And to help us navigate that whole process, Dr. Adu gives us a concrete action plan, specifically for making the most of those waiting periods. He breaks it down into the three main steps. I love a good action plan laid on me. The first step is doing a self-assessment. Take a deep look at what's going on with your emotions oh. and the reasons behind them in those moments when you're waiting. So before we can conquer the waiting game, we need to figure out why we're playing it in the first place. Exactly. And the source material has some great questions to ask yourself during that self-assessment. Things like, how do you usually feel when you have to wait? What's the real reason you're waiting for this particular thing? And what are you hoping to achieve once the wait is finally over? It's like journaling, but specifically when you're, I don't know, waiting for the microwave to finish. It's like he's giving us this like flashlight to see all these thoughts and feelings we have about waiting that we usually just try to ignore. Yeah, we just pick up our phones and zone out, right? Totally. But once we actually take a second to understand those feelings, Dr. Adu says we got to move on to the next step, and that's developing a plan. Uh, but before you start thinking, this means making some crazy complicated skin. Right, like I need a flow chart to get through this wait. Exactly. It's not about escaping the wait altogether. It's more about using that waiting time intentionally. Like maybe if you're stuck in line for something, you could call a friend or catch up on that podcast you haven't had time for. Or maybe it's about taking those moments to really think about what you want, you know, to make sure that what you're waiting for actually lines up with your goals. I love that idea, being intentional with those little pockets of time. But what about those times when you literally can't do anything but wait? Like when you're waiting to hear back about a new job or you're waiting for those important medical test results. Oh, totally. Distracting yourself in those situations feels impossible. I get it. Exactly. And that's where Dr. Reduce third step comes in, taking action. Right. And here's the best part. He's all about ditching the idea that we need a perfect plan before we actually do anything. Ugh. It's so true how often we get stuck in that planning phase, always aiming for perfection, and then we never actually get around to doing anything. He says, and I quote, you don't have to have a perfect plan to take action, but make sure your actions are informed by what comes out of the assessment. Yeah. So even if the only thing you can do in that moment is just sit with your feelings and acknowledge them, you know, like I'm feeling anxious right now and that's okay. That's still a step towards using that waiting time in a better way. It's such a good point. We don't need these big dramatic actions all the time. Sometimes the most helpful actions are those tiny little internal shifts we make. Totally. This whole conversation has been so eye-opening. We started out talking about waiting as this annoying thing, this thing we all hate and just have to deal with. But now it's like waiting can actually help us grow. Who knew? Right. It's all about perspective. We can choose to see waiting as time just going down the drain. Or we can see it as a chance to think about things, mm -hmm. to learn new things, yeah. to reconnect with ourselves. It's a real superpower. So next time you catch yourself constantly checking the time or tapping your foot out of impatience, think about Dr. Adu's research and ask yourself, what can I learn right now in this moment? How can I use this waiting time to become a better version of myself? It's incredible how powerful waiting can be. I know, right? <laughs> it really makes you think. Until next time, everyone, happy waiting.